Board of Directors of Alzheimer's Coachella Valley. And today I've got with me Nan Scholheimer and Kathleen Lubansky, who are volunteers for the new screening center that ACV opened up earlier this year. And I'm so excited to have these two ladies with me today because they are just wonderful volunteers. And I thought we might get started with having them tell us a little bit about their backgrounds and their credentials, and we'll go from there. Nan, do you yes. want to start? Good morning, Pat. So nice to see you. Um, I come by way of um, living in and growing up in Connecticut. And I received my master's in social work, and my interest always was in geriatric social work. Um, as a result of that, I set up a assessment center at the Yale School of Medicine for people who were having problems with memory, and also to provide su support to their friends and their family. Um, as a result of that, I practiced for 40 years back east, and I guess I'm showing my age. Um, and then landed in the Coachella Valley for retirement and was lucky enough to come upon ACV, um, walked in to be a volunteer, and lo and behold, it was unbeknownst to me that their long-term range plan was to have a screening center. So here I was, and here they were, and then we found Kathleen. Kathleen. Yes, my name is Kathleen Levansky. I'm a UCLA Master's Prepared Nurse Practitioner. Um, I got most of my geriatric experience working at Kaiser Sunset in Los Angeles with Dr. Robert Shaw. Then I transitioned into Pasadena and delivered the same kind of care to those people and then came out to the Coachella Valley in about 2002, became associated with Desert Medical Group and then grew into Desert Oasis and helped start the Frail Elderly Program. In helping with that program, I met Pat Kaplan, one of the co-founders of ACV, and we stayed in touch, and lo and behold, she introduced me to the possibility of helping Nan start up the screening center, and I said, why not? And here we are. And the rest is history, as they say. <laughs> well, we're so very lucky to have you two ladies with us, especially given your background and credentials. I know we've... Um, put together some video showing um, participants going through an actual screening and I was hoping that I could get you two ladies to walk us through what happens when someone comes in. Sure. Um, we begin by having the families call. They don't need to be referred by a physician. They can self-refer and call and request a screening appointment. Um, we give them an appointment initially to come to explain to them exactly what kinds of testing will be done and to ask them to give us permission to proceed with the screening. They then are given an appointment and they come back and they then are seen by Kathleen, the person who has cognitive difficulties, while I see the family at the same time to take a history of how things have been proceeding and what effect those changes are having on the family. And then Kathleen and I confer, and then we all sit in this wonderful space, and we get to meet with the person who has the problems with memory and the family to discuss our findings and to make a plan. Wonderful. What exactly are the, the tests or the tools that you use to measure or determine if someone has Alzheimer's or memory loss? Well, we utilize um, validated questionnaires um, I have selected the slums, which is the St. Louis University mental screen, along with the geriatric depression scale, the short form. I ask them to bring in all their medications and supplements, and if they can't, they can bring in a list. And then I do a gait and balance, the Tinetti gait and balance assessment. Have them do a clock drawing. And then we also have them do another drawing uh, in addition to that to help assess visual spatial skills. And how long does this process take? Well, the total process is anywhere from an hour to an hour, 15 minutes. While Kathleen is spending time with the person, I spend time with the family. Um, when they have been sent home the first time, we send them home with some homework. They bring in a questionnaire which helps us understand some of the background information, as well as something called the Caregiver Burden Score. 
So while I am with a uh, family, while Kathleen is doing more quantitative testing, I'm doing more of a qualitative interview to ascertain not only what the burden is like, but how has this disease, uh, what is the trajectory of this disease, which is really critically important. So if someone just yesterday developed problems with memory, she and I would be very aggressive in terms of getting them right away to a physician. However, most of the people we see after I've spent time with the family, we find out that things may have been changing for three to four years. Mm -hmm. But when you're living with it, it's very slow, it's very insidious, and it takes someone like myself to give the family the time to think about it and to reflect on what's been going on. So that's an hour and 15 minutes, and then, as I said, we have the wrap-up with the person and the family, Kathleen and I, and we develop a plan going forward. Okay. Tell me a little bit more about the care, the burden of care um, survey that you mentioned. What types of questions do you ask? The questions range from uh, trying to ascertain how, how many hours a week or a day do you, do you put for for caregiving. And often you don't really think about that, you just do it. But it's very important to uh, quantify that. Um, what effect it's having on your other relationships outside of your caregiving? What relationship is it having on your work? What relationship is it having with your children? So it's really a thorough look at all aspects of the life that the caregiver may be having difficulty with because they're so focused on caregiving. And when you come up with the results of the screening and you sit down with the family member and the loved one who's affected, um, what types of resources, how does that discussion go that you offer them? Because what I'm getting is there's hope. Oh, there's and, a lot of hope. <laughs> yes, and that's so important with this disease. But just tell me about uh, the resources that you use uh, and what's available. Well, we're very lucky because we're housed in ACV, and ACV just has a wealth of services yes. that we mm -hmm. refer to daily. Um, the services that ACV provides that are so important in the life of someone who has problems with memory is when they come here, they're with other people who have problems with memory. So there's no keeping up with the Joneses. There's no having to be protective and not say much because you fear if you say something, somebody will know. Because everybody's in the same boat. Uh, it also allows the caregivers to be together and to talk about the issues of caregiver burden. Uh, other things we do, support groups, support groups, there's classes, uh, art classes, there's tunes for memory, oh, so wonderful. there's a wide range of activities that they can be involved in. Okay. There's so much life at ACV, it's incredible. I, I would ask people to come and just look at the activities and see the joy. I mean, we often talk about the burden of caregiving, but there's some joy and there's some oh, rewards. Absolutely, absolutely. I've been here to some of the programs and it's just been wonderful to see the participants and their caregivers participate in the activities here. Yeah. It really is. So. It's a new normal for them. Absolutely. And you know, we call it club journey intentionally. So you don't say, come on, we're going to this place where people with dementia do activities. You say, come on, let's go to the club. And here they come and it's, it's really a, a profound experience. Well, I understand you've been quite busy since uh, the screening center opened earlier this year. Um, how how hard is it to get an appointment? Well, Kathleen's our statistician, <laughs> as I like to call her. Yeah. I'm right brain, she's left brain. <laughs> no, it's really easy. All they have to do is call ACV and talk to either Priscilla or Patty, and, and they will fill out the paperwork, and the process will start. I think for now we can see people within a week. We're, but I'm, I fear that's going to change because our numbers are growing and growing. We're fastly moving out of the best secret to, in the desert to the desert's best kept secret. Wow. We've got a lot of people coming in. And is there a charge for these services? Com uh, completely free. Um, yeah. cool. And it's done in a holistic environment. And I just wanted to um, reiterate, the appointment is in two phases. Mm -hmm. There's first a, a consent appointment and that usually takes anywhere from 15 minutes to a half hour. 
and they come in and we clarify if they come by themselves that's fine but if they come with a loved one we want to make sure there's the document called durable power of attorney for health care mm -hmm. and if they don't have that then we can supply that as well and then that, after that they're given what we call the homework which is completing a nine page uh, health questionnaire along with the caregiver burden scale if that's applicable to them. And Go ahead. I'd, I'd just like to get back to the point that we are free. One of the major burdens of caregiving is, is financial. Mm -hmm. Medicare covers very little for a condition such as Alzheimer's disease because they view it as a chronic condition. So to have people come here and not have that burden of who's going to pay for it, are we going to have a copay? is incredibly in and of itself therapeutic. Plus all the activities that we refer them to are free of charge as well. So we've really done a good service for the community by taking that burden away. Before the person even walks in the door and my full psychosocial evaluation which provides the history and he then doesn't have to take that time to go over it with the patient or family. It's all there for him. So he has utilized us exactly as this model is meant to be. And it sort of streams like, streams line his um, focus and he really can narrow it to what the needs are for the patient and the family. And, and he gives, we do not make a diagnosis, we're a screening center. But when Dr. Septi sees the patient, he's ahead of the game in terms of his process of thinking through what the diagnosis may be and then he provides a diagnosis and we would hope that through his example many many more physicians within our community would follow his lead and and utilize this in a way that is so beneficial to them again yeah. use it Wonderful. being an adjunct service yes absolutely absolutely it would be great then if people who come to the screening center will go back to their physicians and of course take the report that you provide them um, and show that to their physician and hopefully they will see some value in it, like Dr. Septi. Yeah. I mean, we have the luxury of being able to spend an hour to an hour and a half in day-to-day -day practice for physicians now, that is nearly impossible. Mm -hmm. So we really um, fortunate, fortunately have that time. Plus the environment that we work in is so holistic and serene it makes the client and caregiver very relaxed. I'm sure that makes a huge difference oh, yes. versus being in a clinical setting where there's people coming and going and lots of noise yeah. and and, and comment from so. the families about the paintings on the wall. We put a lot of work and intention into creating this form of environment. We were very lucky to have a woman who's a volunteer who is a stager in real estate. And she came in and helped us stage the whole uh, creation of the center. And if I must say my, so myself, it's really very serene and very welcoming. No white coats here. No, no white <laughs> coats, that's for sure. <laughs> Kathleen and I, after every day, look at each other and say, we are so blessed to see such a wide array of wonderful people in this valley and to, to learn from them. We're not just teaching, we're learning every day. Everybody presents differently. Everybody has a different story. And we're just very, very fortunate. We're, I mean, you got to love what you're doing, and I love what I'm doing. Well, as they say, if you love your job, it's not really a job. So, and Absolutely. go to work with a smile on your face, and and I can tell from you two ladies that you really enjoy what you do. We do. It's thank our passion. So much. Yes. It's our passion. I can tell that. So, thank you so much. Thank you, Pat. Thank you. Pat.